Okay, so welcome to image challenge number five. And the goal in this image challenge is to take a historical photograph and to insert yourself into it and make it as realistic as possible. I chose this image of a 1940s uh, bridge dedication that people have speculated that this man right here, uh, this guy, is a time traveler. He seems very out of place. He seems in more modern uh, clothing than usual. And it's just, he seems really out of place. So I thought this might be a good place to insert myself as an actual time traveler. So uh, the first step is gonna be to take a picture of yourself. And there's a few things I think that you should keep in mind if you wanna make it authentic as possible. Um, the first is camera angle and uh, how this subject here is positioned. So I'm going to try to match his position. I'm going to try to replace this guy in the picture. Um, and so you kind of try to keep in mind where the camera that took this photograph is, the angle he's at, and of course the light source. You can see there's a lot of bright light behind the people, lighting the people from behind here. That's something to keep in mind when you take your picture. So here's my picture. I cropped it a little bit. As you can see, I've got a light source on this side uh, of my face here. And what I want to do is I want to take my background out. And I had the luxury of using a green screen, but you can do this without a green screen, I promise you. I'll show you how to do that as well. With a green screen, it makes it very easy. Uh, I'll show you that first. First, we're going to come down to our layers over here. You can see I only have one layer. That's my picture. It's the background. What I want to do is I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to duplicate my layer, just dragging it down to a new layer tab. And here I can take my eyeball, turn these layers on and off. That is key here. We're going to take our main background. We're going to make it blank. So when I get rid of the green here, you're going to see there's going to be no background. I can do that very easily if I have all one color behind me. If you don't have a green screen, you can just find a cut like a wall that's all the same color. It doesn't have to be green. It'll work with any color. Um, just make sure you're not wearing uh, the color that you're trying to key out. Let's see if I key out my hat by doing this. Nope, my hat stays pretty much out uh, of the key as well. Um, so you can see that once I use the magic wand tool over here, it selects a color type, selects all of it. And if I just hit the delete button on my keyboard, I delete the background. Great, and I can deselect that. I can come over here, clean it up a little bit, grab my eraser tool. Where is my eraser? eraser tool, change the brush size, and get rid of all this other stuff here. Just erasing that. Um, really quickly, I can show you that you don't necessarily need the magic wand tool or a same color. I'm going to show you in the other uh, I'm going to show you in the other photo as well, but you don't need the magic wand. Uh, so let's do this. I'm going to duplicate my background again. I'm going to hide my masked out layer, put this one back in. Another tool in Photoshop that's super easy is the magnetic lasso tool up here. Once I grab that, I can come down here and kind of click, and it'll try to like snap onto like colors. And this is how you can key out your background. I'm going to ignore the little mask that's in my pocket there. And you're just going to outline yourself. And in the interest of time, I'll go a little bit haywire here and show you that you can very easily select yourself. You're going to want to inverse the layer. Hopefully this shows up. Select inverse here. We'll select everything outside of your selection. Hit delete, and there you go. Uh, obviously, I did that very quickly. I'm going to delete this one and bring back this layer here. So this is what I'm going to work with. Now I just have just me here. Let's go back and look at this, this photo here. Next thing I want to do is I want to try to match the black and white. <clears throat> I'm going to match that in my first layer here. So I'm going to switch back and forth between these two pictures a couple times. Over here, we have adjustments. 
we've done this in other image challenges. So uh, I believe even the first image challenge we did, uh, we adjusted, you know, the levels. I'm going to go to hue and saturation. We're going to bring it all the way to black and white. Great. That's step number one. Back to here. And this picture is a little bit overexposed, so I'm going to make the lightness. I'll bring the lightness up. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting a little bit closer to matching the original. That's good. All right. So I'm going to select these two. I'm going to merge these two layers here. This is important because right now our adjustment is on a separate layer, and I want this to be my regular adjustment. If I put my background layer back on, you can see that we still have the green because my adjustment layer is now merged with the, the layer uh, that I want to affect. I'm going to take this off again. I'm going to take my little selection tool. I think it's called the marquee tool. Okay, selection tool, marquee tool. I'm going to select me. I'm going to copy it. Control C will copy it. Come to this page here. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to paste it here. There I am. This giant being. Uh, so quite easily. Now you can see I have two layers. I have my background layer, which is our original photograph. And I have my foreground layer, which is me. Um, I can edit, free transform, and start shrinking this down. I want to start matching the size of myself to the size of the subjects here and kind of bring it in. Get it roughly the same size. I'm going to stop right there for a second. Now I'm going to try to match where he is and where I am. I'm going to try to put these two together. Um, so how can we do that? Uh, pretty easily. If I select my layer that's got me on it, I'm going to come over here to Opacity and drop it down. Now I can kind of see through myself. I can go back to Free Transform. I can kind of match myself a little bit better. Now I have the luxury. I'm going to even adjust my angle here. My original time traveler's got a lot more hair than I do. That's why I wore a baseball cap, so I can kind of hide my self behind him. Move it around. Make myself a little bit bigger here. Now that I'm roughly in place, I'll put the opacity back up. Okay, here I am. So here's here's the issue now. Uh, you can see there's people in the foreground uh, kind of uh, in front of this guy, blocking him. And we have our background picture. If I just put myself over him, you know, I'm just going to be floating in the middle of space, you know. Uh, so. There's a really simple way we can get around that. Uh, and we're going to use layers again. So here's my background layer. What I'm going to do, I'm going to clone that layer. So now I have two of the same layer. And remember our little magnetic lasso selection here? I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use it around all of the people who are in front of him. So if I start right here on this lady's hat, I'm going to start going around and selecting. This is the most painstaking part of the process. But once it works, it's super worth it. So I'm going to start selecting all of these people in front of him, just going around. Uh, the magnetic lasso will snap to like colors. Um, so it's going to kind of stick between the two subjects. And we're lucky that the front subjects are a bit lighter than the guy in the background. 
but if you click your mouse it will put one of those points in manually um, and I click fairly often so that it doesn't go a little haywire okay you don't want to try you try and want to uh, try not to cut off any clothing or anything like that and once we're clear of the guy we don't need to worry about being as uh, direct anymore so I'm just gonna start clicking around clicking clicking and I'm gonna bring it up to our original point click here so now we have a selection of these people in front what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete everything else besides them so again I've got to come up to my selection layer and inverse it so right now only they are selected but when I click inverse everything else is selected and you can see it denoted by these dotted lines around your images so once I do that I can delete them great and I can deselect uh, you can come up to select and deselect all layers um, or you can just uh, click uh, on command D I'm gonna put myself back in view here okay so there I am obviously the people are st I'm still floating on top of the people but if I look at this layer here if I drag it up and put this layer on top now I'm behind everybody else all right so we're getting closer I still think I'm a little too big so I'm gonna make some more adjustments edit free transform and we're shrinking myself down a little bit how much can I play around there's our guy's nose again Let's see pretty good okay so another thing is uh, it doesn't look quite as close to the original so I'm gonna add another adjustment layer gonna come up to adjustments let's go to brightness and contrast I'm gonna boost the contrast up okay we're getting a little bit better now so here's something to keep in mind when you are doing an adjustment layer it's going to adjust the entire picture so it's going to adjust everything below uh, the layers so all the layers below the adjustment layer are going to be affected so uh, I'm going to boost the contrast I'm going to try to match it it's important to note it's not adjusting these people because they are our cutout copy right here um, so I'm going to boost the contrast and boost the brightness a little bit. I'm going to look at these guys in the front as a reference. Once I do that, I'm going to merge these two layers. And so it only affects my layer here. Um, so again, with the adjustments, you can play around a lot with all sorts of different things here. Let's go back to saturation. Can I do the saturation? Now I've already deleted all the saturation. I'm going to increase the brightness again a little bit. Let me go back to contrast. We're going to boost the contrast again. All right, and then we're going to merge all three layers here. Merge these layers so it just affects my section. And then, of course, there's little adjustments you can make all over the place. I can see down here, I'm not quite fully there. I can take my smudge icon and I can kind of smudge my... So it's not going to affect anything in the foreground because we have these people in front of us. So by smudging just a little bit, we can get rid of those lines there. Um, and 
you know, a lot more cleanup can happen. You can see the guy, our original subject's hair behind him, his shoulder here. So you can play around with it for a long time, but the essentials of inserting yourself into uh, a photograph, uh, again, let's talk about it. We have the lighting you wanna keep in mind. You wanna have a similar light source. If you don't, uh, you're gonna lose believability there. Um, so our light source is from above and behind. It's coming in this way just like on the rest of our subjects. Um, and then layers are important. So once you put yourself here, you can see my smudginess here. See, none of this matters because it's gonna be hidden by the subjects in front. Uh, so a way to round that uh, is of course to use your magnetic lasso tool and select everything that's in front and make it a new layer that you can layer on top. So I can put myself in, then I can layer the people in the foreground right on top of me and then I start to blend in the background. So that's essentially what the best uh, practice is for inserting yourself into a photograph. You wanna keep in mind, what's in the foreground? Are the things gonna be blocking me? How can I achieve that? Simple, you cut the people out, you make them a new layer, and you stack them on top. So that is how I inserted myself into this famous photograph of a time traveler. And I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more, but the basics that you all need to know are right there. Thanks for watching.